risk it, Bob. You prefer to risk it. Good luck. That means that you're a sporting titan. You're going to take a chance. All right, here we go. Your opponent is out of earshot. And Stood there for an hour in George Street. They're still going by. What sort of people were they? People like my mother, my sister. You saw them? Mm-hmm. Singing away. They see you? Nah. Where's Lay? Oh, she... Uh, went to get some chocolate. Reckon I got addicted to it over there. It wasn't just dope people got stuck on. It's been a while, hasn't she? Maybe she saw your car. What do you mean by that? You frighten her, that's all. Not that she says anything. She'll get used to you. I did. I got beer as well. Hey, you shouldn't carry things like that. You do your back in and end up like me. Here. You like a beer? Yeah, I'll do the honors. You don't have a girl? I had one for a while, didn't I? Yes. Once bitten, twice shy. Sorry. When you be finished? The test will be about an hour, and then an hour's physio, I suppose. I'll pick you up. No, nah, come on. There's nothing else to do. I'm all right. You go do the shopping. I like to be with you. Jesus, I'm not helpless, you know. Okay. You want to go shopping? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to ride to the shops as well. them of me. You're a pretty lady. I don't like you do that. You're embarrassed. I wish you didn't do it. That's all.
you're doing. Are you sure? How else am I supposed to build up my wrist, eh? No, sorry. I'm definitely low Philip Goddard. Okay. Thanks for checking anyway. Mum, the man in the wheelchair. For months, but the crazy thing is, it was it was a tied ballot, and Gorton used his own vote, his own vote, his casting vote, to chuck himself out. Well, don't you see? William McMahon, fantastic we think cartoon we know material. How to find Phil. Well, that, that's great news. Well, we'll have to go back to that hospital and see if they'll give us his address. Yep. Is this Laurie Fellow's house? Yes. We're looking for Philip Goddard. I'm his mother and this is his sister. We were hoping Laurie might be able to help us. He and Phil were friends in Vietnam. Oh, come in. Mrs. Goddard, is it? Evelyn. Megan. The little sister. He told me all about you. What did he say? <laughs> Just that you were a bit of a wild one. Have you seen Phil? He's been back quite a while and he's never got in touch with us. That's a good shot from ben Owen. Right. It's a long time since I knew him. I uh, finished my tour early. Have a seat. You haven't heard anything? People talking about him? I haven't seen many people since I got back. Can we offer you a cup of coffee, a cup of tea? Yes, I put the kettle on. All right, thank That's you. That's late, by the way. Hello. Hi. Old Phil. He always wrote to us, right up until the last couple of months before he came back. We're worried that maybe he needs help. Phil's got a thick skull. Thick skin. I suppose you think it was a bit of a shambles. A bit of a waste. The war. I think our views changed a lot. I always thought it was probably good for us to be supporting South Vietnam at first. Next domino, eh? And what don't you think Thailand will be next? The Malaysia? Indonesia? I think... The Vietnamese just want to sort out their own country. I don't think they want to conquer anyone else. Communism's not just one country, though, is it? is that Bill Peach will introduce the program and then we'll cut to Canberra with uh, Paul Murphy, Senator Greenwood, and then cut back to us. Uh, you'll be on this camera over here and we'll get a cue, so if you just relax for a minute and... Uh, think that... Good evening. Tonight, in a hookup between Canberra and Sydney, we give the Attorney General, Iva Greenwood, the chance to come face to face with a young man who for many months has foiled all attempts by the police to arrest him. Here's Paul Murphy in Canberra. Senator Greenwood, to a lot of Australians, it seems that so-called draft dodgers are thumbing their noses at the law. They appear frequently in public, they give speeches, they make uh, appearances at meetings and the like, but the police can't catch them. Well, the police have a very difficult task because these people, unlike other criminals, enjoy a measure of popularity with the community. Especially from us. But the important thing for members of the public to remember who do help these people is that they are lawbreakers. 
and by helping them, people are themselves guilty of breaking the law. Well, Senator, I'd like you now to look at the monitor from our Sydney studios. It took us about three hours to locate this draft resistor, who uh, supposedly the police have been sparing no expense searching for for several months. Sir Chaltima, you've heard what the Attorney General has had to say. Do you have any response to that? <coughs> yes, well, Mr Greenwood describes us as... Uh... As lawbreakers and criminals. Um, I'd say his government are the criminals for sending Australian troops to Vietnam. And I'd say that in opposing our country's involvement in the Vietnam War, we are, in fact, uh, refusing to break much more fundamental moral laws than, uh, than the laws that Mr Greenwood and his government have imposed on us. Senator Greenwood. Uh, Mr Sheltima is an Australian citizen, and as such, he is subject to the laws of the land. I don't see that he and his friends have any right to place themselves above that law. Nor do I accept that he and his friends have a, a mortgage on any higher moral law, as he calls it. I would say the communists in Vietnam are the ones who have broken moral laws by invading the Come free republic of Vietnam in the, in the south. I would say it would be a public duty which could be performed by you and Mr. Deacon if you would ask him to keep Mr. Shaltima in the studio until Commonwealth Police can arrive and arrest him. Well, with respect, sir, I don't think it's the ABC's job to help the Commonwealth Police arrest someone. Where's Mr. Shaltima? Uh, for an interview with us. The interview's over. I don't know where he is. He shot through. to stop the war sticker on the bar. Where are we going? Devon Ross's place. Then I'll move you up to Katooma tomorrow. Mick's gonna drive us. Oh, you're coming too, are you? Yeah, I thought I'd keep you company for a while. Oh, everywhere! Always wanted to be in a Cops and Robbers movie. <sighs> Seeing incompetence and half-heartedness of the Commonwealth Police can only be understood in the light of the confused and contradictory signals coming from the government, not only on the problem of draft resistors, but on the Vietnam issue as a whole. For Gough Whitlam and the Labour Party waiting in the wings, it's yet another signal that it's time. It's pathetic. Billy McMahon, They're making them into heroes. The government's handling of the economy What does that make us? We're just the fucking idiots who went. Not just idiots. I've seen posters. Legalised murder, they call it. We're murderers. Do I get something to eat? No. Lay will bring something back. What's this place she's working at? Uh, dry cleaners. Three... Hmm? Uh, three half days, half nights a week. I want to get out and about a bit, did she? The money doesn't do us any harm. I want to do this place up and I can't do it by myself. What do you mean, wants to get out and about a bit? She's happy. You sure? It's almost like you're wanting me to start shitting myself about her. I know something happened between you and Leanne. You never told me about that. Nothing to tell. 
I thought there was something going on between us. I was wrong. I can't do anything from the waist down. You know that, don't you? So there's not all that much that happens in that department. But we love each other, mate. I've got no doubts about that. None. It's me. Do you think you'd be out of sleep? I doubt it. Got room in there for one more? Certainly not, Megan. I could watch you doing that for hours. Oh, you always were a perv. Well, you afford to waking up in the same room two days in a row? Well, when poles are really solid. I don't know. There's always a big swing back at the last minute. As soon as people think Labor might win, they rush back to what they know. Mm -mm. Not this time. Even Dad thinks Goff's going to get in. In fact, I reckon he might even vote for them. Oh, come on. No, it's true. He's half human now. Partly it's his new girlfriend. She really stirs him up. What does he think of that? Mm, I think he even likes it. Are you sad? About what? About what's happened with your parents? Oh, I suppose. In a way. Probably for something that never really existed anyway. If Phil and I hadn't been around, they probably would have split up years ago. It'd be incredible if Goff did get him, wouldn't it? What do you mean? Well, just think of all the people that have got together through this. They're not just going to sit around and go back to normal just because conscription finishes and we pull out of the wall. Yeah. If that energy could be kept going. Oh, the 70s could be amazing. Move it! Oh, Other room! Let go! You're a fire pass, don't you? With me, I can start him off into bed without him wake up. You're dedicated, aren't you? What do you want from me, Phil? You think I want to go to bed with you? I think maybe you should leave. I don't like you talk like that. You tell me something. When did you last see Leanne? I don't see her after she leave. How long was she a VC? The whole time she knew me? I don't know. I don't know about that. Oh, you must have known. The whole village must have known. No. I come from different village anyway. Three villages all move into one. I don't know Leanne good. How until come you're not speaking so well Leanne now? Good. Are you nervous about something? I'm nervous about you. You make me fear. You've got nothing to worry about with me. I'm Laurie's mate. 
You'll marry his wife. Not like a maid to talk like you do. About bed. You don't believe me about the end. You're right. I wouldn't believe anything any one of you said. Maybe you were VC too. Why are you here then? You saw the main chance. Life with Laurie's a lot better than life with Ho Chi Minh. Here you get sugar in your coffee. This is Monica. Hello, Mika. How do you do? Have you been waiting long? Oh, no. No, not really. Your hair looks um, interesting. Hmm. I hardly recognize it. Makes you look a foot taller. Hmm. Oh, you've just shrunk. <laughs> Shall we uh, go in? I'll search. You'll get the full 18 months, just because you made them look like such a bunch of idiots. I'm prepared to be a character witness, if you like. Wouldn't look too good in camera, would it, Dad? Well, I'll probably confirm people's opinion, actually, that I'm a closet red. Don't flatter yourself. Mr. Goddard? Yes. Good evening, sir. We'll have a table for you in five minutes. We did book for eight. I know. A mistake. I'm very sorry. Five minutes only? Excuse me, please. Never mind. <coughs> when your department head, you'll be able to sack incompetent maitre d's. That'll be the day. <laughs> Mr. Goddard, camera on the line for you. Excuse me. Hello. 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 Didn't Douglas tell you? No. I'm sure he didn't tell Mum either. Typical. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? It's hard to get much out of him. Oh, he's always been like that. It's doing that sort of job that makes you secretive about everything. Yes, politics. I liked Evelyn a lot. But I gather things were pretty much over before I came on scene. Mm. Yeah, they were. And what was she like? Well, you apparently met her in Saigon. Mm -hmm. She had the job of showing you around. Uh, oh, that woman. Oh. And what did you think of her? Oh, she's all right. She's a lot younger than him, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. And very attractive. Mm -hmm. He's done well for himself. Mm, probably won't last. Gets exasperated with him, I think. She's got him fairly well worked out, though. Good for her. Oh, God. I can't help feeling twinges of jealousy. Pathetic, isn't it? Well, you shouldn't. What's there to be jealous of? He is your father. You're much better off without him. Sometimes I feel you're almost patronising me. Well, if I am, I probably learned it off Dad. <laughs> Oh, you're so rude. How come I got two such rude... Such a rude daughter. Don't understand, Phil. I don't see why he couldn't even just... just telephone. We don't know anything about him. He's a stranger.
Good night. Thanks. <laughs> You're a breath of fresh air. Just had my mother here for two hours. What's wrong with her? Uh, she just gives Lay a hard time. I don't mind. You should. How are you feeling? Panic, mate. Fifth time and it doesn't get any easier. It's getting knocked out that worries me. When you dream, you still know you're alive. With these anaesthetics, you go out completely. You're dead. Guess what? I got to vote. I wheel the ballot box around here. First time I ever got the chance. Who'd you go for? None of the bastards. That, uh... New fast bowler Thompson was showing some form yesterday. Mm, strange action. Oh, a lot of pace, though. I reckon he could have a future. Well, let's use some fresh supplies for your sugar habit. Thanks. When's it getting underway? First needle in a couple of hours. Makes you dopey. Could you go and ask the nurse for some orange juice? Hey? Thanks. I want you to take her home, mate. She won't want to go, but last time when I was coming out of it, they reckon I was swearing about nogs and carrying on about all Christ knows what. It's like there's this cesspit in the back of your mind. The anaesthetic pulls the plug, all comes pouring out. You don't mind? Of course not. Now, as I told you earlier, we have uh, peace activist Megan Goddard with us, who is in fact, uh, what, a close friend, is that fair to say? Of draft resistor Serge Sheltima, who many of you will remember narrowly escaped Commonwealth Police while being interviewed on the current affairs program this day tonight only to be arrested shortly after. Thanks for coming in on election day, Megan. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, now, as you know, we're not allowed to talk politics because of the media blackout, but uh, perhaps you can first tell me how Serge is. Well, um, Serge and six other men are currently serving 18-month jail sentences under the National Services Act, and I can tell you, he and the other men are certainly hoping for the right result tonight even harder than I am. It's definitely no picnic in prison. Of course, one of the big things for him is the, um, the possible effect of a prison conviction on his, um, on his job prospects because Serge holds an economics degree and an 18-month jail sentence doesn't exactly look good on the curriculum vitae. How about your relationship? I mean, how was that affected by his life on the run? Well, I think that both of us more or less agree that it had to be kept in the background while all this was going on. And hopefully it'll be over in a few hours. <laughs> yes, well, we are limited to what we can say on the air. Uh, if you'd like to contact Megan or contribute to our discussion, you can phone us now on 324-6984. So all I'd like to say is that I was in the Second World War in New Guinea, but if I was up for conscription today, I'd be doing the same as your mate, because it's a different ball game, this war. Yes, I think that that is an important point to make. And thanks, Bob, from Manly. Next up, we have a Vietnam veteran. Hello, Tom, from Matraville. I'd just like to ask Miss Goddard... What she thinks of Australian troops in Vietnam now. Megan? Um, I, I understand that you were over there yourself, Tom. That's right. This was a good friend of mine who's in Concord Repat Hospital this afternoon for his fifth major operation to remove some shrapnel from his spine. What would you say to him? Um... I think that that many soldiers who served in Vietnam went believing that they were doing the right thing. But I think the issues of Australian and American involvement are, are much clearer now. I don't really give a stuff what you think. I'd just like to know what you'd say to my friend who's in a wheelchair now because he was an Australian who believed in obeying Australian law. I, I would say that it's very difficult 
for any of us who didn't go through what you and your friend experienced over there to um to understand how you feel about everything but um probably what you went through also makes it very difficult for you to understand our feelings we are not against our troops in any way we want them safely back because we believe that it is a brutal war that's not Australia's war and it's not America's war either. Well, we seem to have lost our friend from Matraville. I'm sorry. It was my brother. Here at Canterbury, yes. they're on the track for the port hacking handicap in which there are two scratchings, okay. Bay Melody and Lord Ben. I go back. This one. There hasn't been a great deal of confidence about the support for any. Thank you very much. And at the moment, Dugling and Caleb. He's in the operating theatre now. There's been some support for Silver Blue with Peter Cook in the south. And the weakness of the field, I suppose, gives a horse like Ponderosa also. It's my sister. You don't know where I am, all right? And if Yorkshire, of course, ever came back to his two year old. What do I say? Just that you don't know where I am. Hello. How's Laurie? We heard he's in hospital. Yes. Um, Phil was on the radio this afternoon. On talkback? I heard. I know that, that he doesn't want to see me, but I was wondering if you'd be able to give him a message. Um, if you could tell him his... His mother really needs to see him, and his father's coming down from Canberra tonight. It'll, it'll just be the family. I've, I've written down the address. And if you could tell him that I'd love to see him. Okay. I'll tell him. Thanks. Um, I hope that your husband's operation is okay. You should go. No way. I don't have a family anymore. Whitlam's well up already. God, look at McMahon. He's always a slow starter. That electorate's notorious. The seat of the leader of the opposition, Mr. Gough Whitlam. Mr. Whitlam is well ahead of the Liberal Party opponent, Mr. Dunby. I'll go. Oh, hi, Dad. Phil hasn't shown up. No, not yet. I'm sure she gave him the message, though, the Vietnamese one. She was really nice. Come through. Well, the DLP is not doing that much better, I suppose, than the Australia Party candidate either. I haven't left you much to say. I'm sorry. We're now on bridge. Hello, Douglas. Hello. How are the figures? Oh, looking good so far. Who'd you vote for? <sighs> That's why we have a secret ballot. Mm. I bet he voted for you golf. You ever see yourself as a Prime Minister of Australia? I haven't thought about it. I, um, you know, I really haven't. Um, it's just, just so hypothetical that it's, it's not worth talking about. Uh, Mr Whitlam's going to get my enthusiastic support and um, <coughs> he will be, I think, uh, <coughs> great Prime Minister. <coughs> McMahon once predicted that you would succeed Mr Whitlam as leader of the Labour Party. Well, Mr McMahon's predictions have been so abysmally wrong and everything else that I'm almost said that I won't succeed Mr Whitlam, I think. If I'm going to, I'd, I'd much prefer to have a more reliable source than Mr McMahon. Want a drink? Settle you down. All right. 
I have one. And then I go to the hospital. Why don't you like me? Who says I don't? The way you look at me. You're Laurie's wife. If you weren't here, he'd kill himself. But sometimes you look at me like you want to hurt me. I show you something. It's hard to hurt me now. Who did it? He never told us. Soldiers. What soldiers? Does it matter? Americans. Then after I would have joined VC like Lean. But Laurie took care of me. And now he's hurt. He needs me. I thought Leon needed me. Leon had no war with you. Everything she told me was a lie. I trusted her. There's nothing I trust now in the world. She had no choice. What do you mean? Her family took in her eldest sister's children. Parents killed by plane. Her mother, she is shot. Accident. Accident by soldiers. Always an accident. So there is her grandmother, the two children, in Lien. Her other sister go to work in a bar. She sends money back. When Lien finds out what she does, she cries. And then her brother, he is killed. You lay his body out in the village to see who cries out. But you must stay silent. Village broken. Family broken. No honor left. Whole country filled with screaming. No choice. She love you. No choice. Champagne. Will you be celebrating? In a way. This government's run its course. Run out of ideas. I got a bottle of champagne. For Phil came. So, how are you? I'm fine. How's Monica? She's good. I'm sorry I uh, didn't explain that you knew each other. For some reason, I just assumed you'd realize it was her. I'm not a mind reader. 
She's uh, coming down tonight on the late play. I guess you should go and meet her. And you're planning to go to Italy, Megan tells me. Perugia. They have a language course. Great. Great. You were always terrific at languages. Translating, were you thinking of? Perhaps. Or an interpreter. I could probably line you up some good contacts there. I've got some quite good contacts myself, thanks. I did actually talk to people in Canberra too, you know. Yeah. This is stupid. How are you really? Oh, well, um, um, I had some bad patches of uh, feeling sorry for myself, but, um, but doors are uh, opening up. Well, the funny thing is, um, I don't think I want to stay in Canberra anymore. I've had a lot of ups and downs. I missed you terribly at first, for a long time. But I've had lots of time to think about things, and basically I think I'm pretty good now. <laughs> Probably best to have been for years. I just wish we hadn't lost Phil on the way. That wasn't us, it was the war. Neither of us managed to help, even to know what was happening to him. I don't think we can blame ourselves for that. Don't you? I wish I felt the same way. I wish that Harry hadn't do it. It's okay, Laurie, it's finished. I yell out a sway. No, you were very good. Pity. Nurses were gonna make him. Made him. Made him blush last time. Don't know if I want to. Does someone else here? It's Phil. Can you talk? Yes. You came through, mate. Good as gold. He can talk. He's got no face. He got no face standing over there, Phil. Have a sleep now. Yeah. Mr. Whitlam has obviously won, and he's won a handsome victory. Uh, there can be no doubt about the trend in New South Wales and Victoria, uh, and they show a decisive majority for him. I congratulate him. In the next few days, everything will change. There'll be no um, more conscription. Part, um, uh, we'll be out of the war. Yes. And it'll only be a matter of time for the Americans. God, it's incredible. Although I don't think it'll end the misery for the Vietnamese. At least we'll be leaving their country to them. Yes. Now going in there certainly made the agony that much greater. But I can't imagine the communists are going to be magnanimous victors. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Hadn't you better go and meet your friend? There's no opportunity, yes. you'll see, to answer any questions because uh, it's taken us a very great time to clear. I can give you a lift. Well, thanks, I'm okay. I've got a higher car from the airport. But we, it's clear that we. We'll we walk won. you down. Uh, handsomely in New South Wales and Victoria. These are the policies which we have put in the last parliament and throughout the campaign. We didn't diverge from them. We weren't distracted from them. And we are very much reassured by the response that the public gave to our program. And as expressed by all my colleagues, and myself.
and we are, of course, very much aware of the responsibility with which the people have now entrusted us. It's been marvellous seeing you both again. Yes, it's good to see you looking so well. You too. <laughs>